Hey everyone, in this video I wanted to talk about the Azure Compute Unit, a way we can help understand the relative performance of the different virtual machine SKUs and versions. As always, this video is useful. Please go ahead and like, subscribe, comment and share and hit the bell icon to get notified of new updates. As we know, when I create resources, now virtual machines and other types of resource built on top of virtual machines like virtual machine scale sets, AKS node pools and more, we have different characteristics of the virtual machine. But one of the big characteristics of the virtual machine is we pick the VM SKU. For example, a DV2, a DV3, etc. And then we have different sizes, for example, n number of virtual CPUs. And we may want to understand, well, okay, the DV2 or the EV5 or whatever that is, what's the actual performance of these virtual CPUs? How do I understand what performance I get from those? And this is where these Azure Compute units come in. Now, the reason we have these is important to understand, yes, a certain number of virtual CPUs has a relation to how many parallel threads of execution I can do within my virtual machine. The more virtual CPUs I have, the more parallel threads of execution I can have, which is great if I have a multi-threaded application. But the virtual CPUs are not all equal you have to really consider the fact that obviously behind the scenes, these run on a physical machine. Now that physical machine has a processor. And I can really think about modern processors today actually have multiple cores. And there's a relationship between, hey, I see a virtual CPU and then there are cores virtual processors, logical processors, and then the physical cores that actually do the execution of my instructions. And there are advancements in technology. A processor from seven years ago is gonna perform very differently from a modern generation processor. It's not just the frequency, the speed in which the cores operate, but there are instruction sets, there are capabilities, there are enhancements to instructions that make them perform better. They add new types of instructions that the operating system, the application can take uh, capabilities of to perform better. And we can see this if we go and look at processors. So for example here, if I just go and look at a DV2, this is an older SKU, we can see the processors that it's actually using we can see it's telling us, well, hey, for example, this third generation Intel Xeon Platinum 8370Z Isolate processor. And then also we'll see, oh, okay, some are a Cascade Lake. So there are some differences in the processors. We can see the speed they're running at, for example. And there's a whole set of different processors that a DV2 may be running on because it's a very old type of virtual machine and the hardware has advanced. So technically that DV2 could be placed on a whole set of different compute clusters. Whereas if we look at the newer version, let's say the DV5, well here we can see that well, this runs on a very different set of hardware. Here we can see we're not getting this whole list of different hardware. This is only running on that third generation Intel Xeon iStake processor. Whereas again, that DV2, while it may run on that just based on the placement, it also could be running on far older pieces of hardware, like the Haswell, uh, the Broadwell, all these different generations. So underneath there are different types of processor and as time goes on, they advance, they get new capabilities. And of course, some are Intel based, some are AMD based, and we see that in the type. Now different workloads use different parts of the processor's capability set. So not all workloads will perform exactly the same. Some might take advantage of those new instruction sets, those enhancements, some won't. So as a customer, I'm like, okay, there's these different VM SKUs and these different versions. What's a, an estimation of the performance I can expect to see? 
And that's the point of the Azure Compute Unit. The Azure Compute Unit is designed to give you some relative performance that I would expect to see with the different versions of the SKUs and the versions of the SKUs. So if we jump over and look at the overview of the Azure Compute Unit article, the important thing here, it's based off of kind of the initial A1 standard having a score of 100. Now they're using a certain piece of benchmarking software, I think it's CoreMark, and that's how they ascertain the values that can then lead to these relative values. So here we can see, okay, the A1s, they have a score of 100. And then the D series, the originals, okay, 160 to 250. Uh, the DV2s, 210 to 250. So they, they go up as the hardware gets better. Now, you might wonder, well, why is there this range, 210 to 250? So Intel and AMD processors have the idea of boost. If the physical processor and those multiple cores, depending on the load, maybe the load is differing over the cores, the power consumption, the current, the overall frequency, the overall work, it can actually exceed the base frequency of cores and let them run faster. So I can actually get a, a better performance on those cores. It's not a guaranteed, it depends what else is happening on the processor, but that's why you see that range of the potential. It's all about using that Intel Turbo Boost or the AMD Boost technologies. So that's why we see that. So we understand they go up as the versions go up. So that will make sense. But suddenly, well, the DV2, okay, that was 210 to 250. And that was the V2. The V3 drops. Why would a newer generation drop? And what we have to pay attention to now is this right-hand column. And this is all about the idea, if we scroll up and look, this is virtual CPU to core. And what we can see is it changed from the V3s of many of the SKUs, that includes like the EV3, most of them now you see this two to one ratio. And this really now is about industry best practices. If we think back to this idea of cores, what they found is many times you can have a core actually goes into an idle state, it's waiting on something. There's some, maybe it's a, a cache miss or the predictive path was wrong and the core's sitting there waiting, which is wasteful. And so while a core normally has one set of execution capabilities so I can have a thread per core and the ratio historically would have been, well, one virtual CPU to core. That's what one to one is what we saw. But then the vendors introduced this idea of hyper-threading, and both Intel and AMD do this. And what they do is they duplicate just a few parts of the processor. I can think about where I store the execution state, where I prepare instructions. So now instead of there being one lane going into the core, you can really now think about it as two lanes are gonna pass into this core. And I can tee up kind of two pieces of work. So now, if one of these is now paused, it goes into a stored state, well, the other one can now use the core. So I get a boost. It's still only one execution engine within that core, but now when those things happen that would have caused it to store and therefore sit idle, hey, I can kind of flip and use the state of this other thread. So now with hyper-threading, enabled, what I now get is two logical procs per physical core. So you get that two to one ratio. And that's what you're seeing here. The industry best practices are, let's take advantage of this. It does not double performance at all. Intel in the early days would say it, maybe it's a 30% performance improvement. It really does vary again on the type of work you're doing but it really maximizes, it cuts down those idle, those stored state. So the reason you're seeing the drop is from the V2 to the V3, well now it's hyper-threaded. 
I'm getting now my two virtual CPUs are now going to a single core that's using hyperthreading. So the overall performance of each virtual CPU drops because yes, the core got better with the enhancement to the generation, but now that one core is powering two virtual CPUs. So that's why it dropped. And the pricing did reflect that as well. So if we was, for example, to go and look at the pricing calculator, if we're looking here at the V2, and that V2 is two virtual CPUs, only seven gigabytes of RAM, 100 gigabytes temporary, and what we can see is that's basically $183, $184 a month. Let's just say that. If I now change that to the V3 of exactly the same, well, it's actually now got eight gigabytes of RAM. So you get one gigabyte of RAM more, but the price is actually cheaper. It's $152.57. So you're paying less. So yes, the performance dropped a little bit based on those ACUs. We got more memory, but we're actually paying less money for it. So I'm still getting a good balance of, hey, I'm paying based on the performance, the resources I'm getting. So this is why they dropped. When you see that drop from the V2 to the V3, it's because they introduced the hyper threading, which really became just this industry best practice to really maximize the hardware that is available. So that's a key point of this. Now, if you're interested, actually, the raw score, so you can go through. And I can go and look at all the different versions and I can see the relative performance of the different virtual machine um, SKUs. But also they have, you can see over here on the left hand side, benchmark scores. So a lot of the newer processors, I can actually go and look at the raw benchmark score, both for Linux, I can see them here, and for Windows. And for Windows, is actually going through and if I'm trying to see it correctly, it tells you, hey, yeah, I'm using CoreMark. Now realize here, so that's great. I can go and actually see the average score across multiple runs of tests on these processors. So you can go and get the absolute values. And again, those absolute values are what the ACU is based off of. It's just the ACU makes it simpler I can see a nice little relative value. Now, one important thing to point out though, is that that is a benchmark. Different benchmarking tools will give different results. They test things in different ways. And so the absolute performance you get is gonna vary. It depends on the instruction sets, the, the work your app does to know exactly what the performance is gonna be across the different versions. Again, newer generations of processor, enhanced instructions, um, new types of instruction sets. Yes, they may speed up the frequency, but it's often those new types of instructions that lets it do types of work that actually can give us a, a big performance boost. And it depends on your application, the operating system, which of those it will actually take advantage of. So the Azure Compute Unit gives me an idea based on a benchmark, but realize your exact mileage may vary. But that was it. That's all I wanted to cover. So understand, hey, ACU is just giving me that relative value. The reason the ACU dropped from a V2 to a V3 is was the introduction of hyper-threading, but the price also dropped accordingly. So you're, you're paying based on the resource, the performance you're getting. Understand the ACU is based on a certain benchmarking tool. So depending on the workload you're doing, your actual mileage may absolutely vary. So with that, I hope that was useful. Hope that cleared up what that is. And until next time, take care.